Well, throughout this month, we have showcased our region's place in black history, a tour of people, places, and movements that have enriched our culture. And if we had the time, we would show them all to you, the work of our reporting team as they uncovered some little known or recognized pieces of that history. And this morning, we'll take a quick look back at our past. The American story, under one flag, but more of a mosaic than a portrait, scattered with all of our histories and how they intertwine. It gives me great pleasure on this day to officially dedicate Fannie Jackson Coppin and her plaza to campus. Like the story of Fannie Jackson Coppin. The sculpture that stands here, she will exist as a motivator, an inspiration. She is extending a diploma to all of those who are willing to accept it and understand that through a, tra a transformative education, there is nothing you cannot accomplish. A strong image from an even stronger woman, Coppin State University's namesake, influential not just as the second black woman to earn a bachelor's degree, but also in giving back as the first black principal of a major Philadelphia school. From Philly, we now travel down to Maryland's eastern shore. Now, can you imagine driving? Some people drove two, three hundred, four hundred miles to get here for one day, but the, the fact was, it was a beach, the summertime, and folks could enjoy themselves. And many families did, black families, to a black owned resort near Annapolis in the 50s and 60s. An oasis that not only drew families, but performers, the likes of Basie, Ellington, and Fitzgerald. Blacktastic, way above average. Black boy joy, black girl magic. Blacktastic keeps the music playing in their Black History Month feature. The one day virtual event used storytelling, theater, and music to celebrate both history and culture. Our history is vital and it's important that we're telling it. Just as each brushstroke tells the story of the late Elijah Cummings keeping his spirit alive, the work of Baltimore artist Jarrell Gibbs commissioned for the portrait. This will be here way after I'm gone, you know what I mean? So it's like a, it's a huge honor. Um, I'm grateful, I'm blessed to have this opportunity. It's, it's big not just for me, but it's big for my family and it's big for my city. A city part of a rail system, the B&O, whose president at one time, a Quaker, never let fines or threats keep them from carrying freedom seekers from 1827 through the Civil War. We can see um, instances coming up where um, they are confronted with the fact that a freedom seeker has passed on the B&O Railroad and are being fined or sued for that. And we can also see that the BNO is not reacting in a way to try to enforce it better, but rather uh, basically saying, all right, let's proceed with the $500 fine. It would be the Underground Railroad in Hagerstown, an area that historians say people escaped from as it was a center for the slave trade. Now, markers lead visitors to points of interest in black history. But I hope it'll cause a little bit of, uh, of uh, you know, contemplation and and, and to think about it, think about the, the history of this country that's, that's somehow buried or, or been uh, whitewashed. Much like the work of activists of Nadine Seiler and Karen Irwin, preserving the moment in time, signs left at D.C.'s Black Lives Matter Plaza, messages spanning the globe now being digitized by the Enoch Pratt and D.C. libraries. The people who put those um, signs on the fence, they came to express something. They came to express love, they came to express anger, they came to express frustration. They just wanted to be heard, they just wanted people to know that they cared. And a big thank you to Lisa Robinson, Mindy Becerra, Barry Sims, Kim Dacey, and a host of others who brought us these stories and brought them to life. That's all for this edition of 11 TV Hill. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.